it's Heather Rodriguez from naturalfertilityinfo.com and in today's video I want to cover a topic that is very near and dear to my heart but also very important but first I want to read a quote that has to do with today's topic he who takes his medicine and neglects the diet wastes the skill of his doctors this is an old Chinese proverb and basically what it's saying is that if you are not, if you're taking pills, herbs, supplements, medications, but you're ignore, but you are ignoring your diet, you are completely wasting all of those things that you were doing. You would have way better effects if you are focusing on your diet and then adding and using those things in your life. So that's what I want to talk to you about today: is the importance of the fertility diet, not only just for being healthy, but also for making the rest of your fertility plan more effective, and also. Um, nutrition a lot of times can actually be the cause of fertility issues like lack of nutrition, lack of certain nutrients, certain deficiencies can actually cause fertility issues. Um, I like to say a lot, you are what you eat, so eat as if your fertility depends on it because it does. The foods that you're eating are so important in preparation for conception, during pregnancy, and during breastfeeding. The foods that you're eating have an impact on um, the brain health of your child, your child's immune system, your future child's moods, your future child's learning capabilities. The foods that you're eating now and the foods that you eat during pregnancy and breastfeeding have such a huge impact on your child's future. So now is a good time to start having good habits. It's also going to benefit your fertility to start eating healthier now. There was a study by Harvard that showed that women who changed their diets to a healthier whole food diet with some specific important factors which we'll cover, had an 80% reduction in infertility due to lack of ovulation. That's huge. 80% of these women began ovulating again and no longer had infertility issues. So that's something else to think about when you're thinking about uh, what you should do for your fertility. One of the main reasons I brought this up is we get a lot of people asking us, what can I do, Heather, what can I do to boost my fertility? Here's what's going on with me. I write back to them, what are you eating? What have you been trying? What's your diet look like? Please write me with three days of your typical diet. And they'll always, when they write back, they'll say, oh, well, I've been taking these herbs and taking these supplements. My diet's fine. Don't worry about it. But once you actually take a look at their diet, or once lack of diet because they won't even tell me what they're eating, you'll find that most people don't eat very healthfully, that they're not eating the way that they need to in order to have the best results that they can. You have to think of it like this. Your body is constantly rebuilding its cells, rebuilding its organs, even rebuilding its bones. Your body is constantly rebuilding itself. It's making blood, it's making cervical mucus, it's helping to build your uterus, it's producing hormones, your cycle, so many functions. And all those functions that are dependent on the building blocks that it gets from the foods that you eat. That you eat. So if you're eating packaged foods, what kind of building blocks is that for your body? If you're eating fast food, what kind of building blocks is that for your body? What kind of hormones and organs are you going to build from that type of food? But if you're eating this live vibrant food or this whole food that's full of color, life, antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, what kind of body are you going to build then? You know, that's something to think about when you're out, when you're eating out, when you're choosing the foods to eat. You, um, you know, think about what is this going to actually turn into inside of my body? The other day, me and my husband went to a restaurant, and we were looking at the menu, and they had this huge menu of milkshakes. And I have to tell you, you know, I haven't had a milkshake in a very long time. I'm lactose intolerant. I can't really have them, or I'll be bent over in pain. But my brain was like, oh my gosh, that milkshake smells so good, or sounds so good. But then I sat there because of this habit I've created, and I was like, do I really want that milkshake? What's that milkshake going to turn into in my body? And once I thought about what it consists of, like it was made up of milk. Well, what's the milk going to do? Where'd the milk come from? What's inside the milk? Then I just completely did not want the milkshake any longer, and I ordered something way healthier, you know, that had lots of color and lots of vegetables in it. So um, I'm going to cover some tips, like kind of like some guidelines on how, what an actual healthy fertility diet looks like, and then I'm going to give you um, three of the most important things about a fertility diet. Okay, so the first is to eat lots of organic fruits and vegetables. It's important for them to be organic because the pesticides we have found that are sprayed on fruits and vegetables are contributing to fertility issues. So organic is more, costs more, but it's so well worth it. And also the foods are generally uh, grown in a way which actually is more makes them more nutritious because of the soils that they're grown in. So lots of fruits and vegetables. Second is to eat less dairy or no dairy at all. 
The reason for this is, there's two reasons for this. The first is um, a lot of dairy, especially conventional dairy, has hormones in it. The way that they get these, milk to, these cows to produce so much milk is they pump them full of estrogen. And estrogen is stored in, fat, in the fat of the body, which is in milk. So if you are estrogen dominant and you're having you know, fertility issues, milk is going to be, you're going to be consuming more estrogen. Not good. The second reason uh, that I say less dairy or no dairy at all is because dairy can be very congesting. If there happens to be an issue going on that is congesting in nature, such as say PCOS, you know, the eggs aren't being released, there's cysts growing, endometriosis, there's tissues that are growing but not being released, anything that's like a stagnant condition like that, heavy periods, clots, um, are not helped by something that's mucus forming, something that's thick and heavy. You want light things such as juices and water to help cleanse and, and hydrate the body instead of something that's heavy and thick. Um, the next is grains. Eat grains in their whole form. Eat grains the way that they just look. All they need to be is just lightly cooked. So that would be, um, I would suggest the weird grains too, you know, like the quinoa, the millet, buckwheat, the rices, go for the purple, the black, you know, the ones with a lot of different colors, the brown rices. And the reason is, is those, they're actually, a lot of them are pseudo grains. Um, they're easy to digest, they have tons of fiber in them, they have antioxidants in them and B vitamins. But try to focus on those ones and staying away from the wheat products, such as the processed wheat, but also some of the whole wheat products. Um, the more and more research that we have been doing into gluten, celiac, and wheat intolerance connection with infertility, is amazing. We're seeing a lot of link between endometriosis, we're seeing a lot of link with recurrent miscarriages, and we're seeing some links with unexplained infertility. We'll be covering that in a later video for you, um, but start getting to like those pseudo grains. Start trying new things. Um, the next thing, eat a high fiber diet. Fiber is incredible at taking excess estrogens out of the body. It helps the body to get rid of the estrogens that are coming from the environment, that are coming from pesticides, chemicals. It helps the body to cleanse those. High fiber foods are dark leafy green vegetables, grains, and fruits. Tons of fiber in there. If you're eating a whole food diet, such as the one that we're suggesting that you look into here, you'll be getting tons of fiber. Uh, there's two things to stay away from. The first is soy. Soy mimics estrogen in the body, and if you have estrogen dominance as it would be, then soy is going to cause, may cause more of an issue. The thing with soy is that it, most soy foods are very concentrated. If you're just eating a soybean, that's very different than when you're drinking soy milk, which has been concentrated, or tofu, or soy cheese, or soy protein powder, or soy bar. I mean, there's so much soy products, but they're all concentrated, so you're getting a lot more in per square inch than you normally would if you're eating whole foods. Um, and soy is in everything, so trying to avoid it just in its main food form that you know you're eating soy is good because you might be getting little pieces of it in your salad dressing and it's everywhere. Um, the next is sugar. The reason that I say to stay away from sugar is that sugars like you know white sugar, sugar that you put in your coffee, sugar you put into different foods can cause blood sugar spikes which are um, can cause hormonal imbalance. Very simplified explanation of it but that's basically what happens. Some good alternatives are a little bit of honey, a little bit of maple syrup, or stevia. Um, the next is drink lots of clean water. You know, it's pretty basic, but water is amazing. This is another topic we're going to go more into de in depth with, but water is absolutely so amazing. It's so much more than you would ever think it was. It's not just something to hydrate ourselves. There's so much to water. Uh, there's a couple doctors that have devoted their life to studying and educating people about water and how important it is. Um, and how important hydration is. So drink lots of clean water. And then the last one is to eat your greens. Eat lots of leafy green vegetables. There's so many amazing compounds, phytonutrients, um, fiber, antioxidants, everything in greens. They're absolutely amazing and tons of protein. A lot of people ask, where to get protein? Where can I get more protein? Greens are absolutely incredible. Okay, so the three most important things, regardless of of whether or not you eat vegetarian, whether or not you eat meat, whether or not you eat... Um, oh, that's something I forgot to mention. Did I mention the grass-fed meat? Oh, I forgot to mention that. Let's go over that. Um, for meats, the most important thing about meat is to make sure that it's grass-fed. Make sure it's not factory farmed meat. Factory farmed meat, again, is going to have hormones. They make these animals grow so quick so they can get them to market as soon as possible that they're pumping them up full of hormones and they're feeding them foods that are they're not um, naturally supposed to be eating. So try to get meats that are either 
free range, um, grass fed, or if you can, you know, get some game, some wild game, that would be the best option. A lot of you are saying those types of meats are very expensive. Well, then eat less of them. Eat, you know, one four ounce serving a day. You know, you don't have to eat so much meat in a serving. Or go vegetarian. You can definitely, you will be healthier eating vegetarian. Um, and you'll save a lot of money, but you don't have to. You can still eat meat, but just make sure it's clean meat that you're eating. Now, on to the most, three most important things. One is, eat as many foods as you can that do not have a label. Number two is eat fresh living foods. You want crispy, live foods that have color because heat can destroy a lot of different things in foods, such as folic acid and zinc. Those are two extremely important nutrients for fertility. The last is nourish yourself with juices, smoothies, and nutrient-dense foods. Flood your body with juices and smoothies. These have so many nutrients, and by blending and juicing them, your body's able to absorb them a lot easier and a lot quicker. All right, so that was the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye.